Hello and welcome to your newest Bootstrap tutorial. This one actually has nothing to do with Bootstrap. This one's all about Yahoo Finance API, which is kind of like the fossilized dinosaur of internet services. That's right. It's older than, I don't know, it's older than something. It's old. It's like eight years old, but it still works just fine. And actually a lot of people use it, which is quite a surprise because it's A from Yahoo and B from Yahoo. Um, so let's get into how to take care of getting a stock quote in real time from Yahoo Finance. Um, so this is our uh, file that we've been working on. Our bootstrap file looks just like this. I haven't done any styling to it whatsoever, but we've got our buttons working um, and all that stuff. So there's a lot of different ways to query Yahoo Finance uh, API. Um, for our purposes, we're going to use one that's probably not optimal. You usually want to do this in a separate JavaScript file. However, if you try to test this locally, which means if you don't run your own mock server on your machine and you just load it in the browser, which is what we've been doing, uh, you're going to get something called a cross-domain request error. Whenever you try to make any sort of HTTP request, which is what we're going to be doing, to another domain that's not yours, uh, in HTML, you're not really allowed to do that. Um, you have to have it hosted live and then, uh, you know, provide some special permissions to do it. Um, with our Google Charts, this is acceptable because it's through Google's API, so we can call to that one, but most sites don't let you do this. Um, you can kind of get around this restriction, though, by putting your code in script tags in your HTML body. So we're going to do that. Again, it's not, uh, not optimal, but that's what we're going to do. Um, you need to put this at the bottom of your file after the jQuery, okay? Because we're going to use the jQuery function dot get JSON. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've pasted in uh, the lines that we need. It's actually not very much, believe it or not, and I'm going to walk you through what each one does. So the first variable, base URL, query dot yahoo apis dot com slash v one slash public slash YQL, question mark, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what this is, this is the base URL that you need to go to to get information out of Yahoo. Um, every time you make a query to the API, you use everything up to here. All of this stuff. No matter what you're looking for, you're using this. Okay, now in HTTP language, all of this looks familiar until you get right about here. So, slash YQL means that you're talking in Yahoo query language, YQL. Question mark means what follows is a parameter of this request. Kind of like a parameter in a function. In fact, it's exactly like a parameter in a function. That's what it is. So in Yahoo query language, the parameter to our request is the query Q equals, and then we're going to end there. Okay. The next variable we have is the YQL query variable. This is going to specify exactly what we want to get from Yahoo. We're going to select from Yahoo Finance dot quote where symbol in this is all Yahoo language. Uh, I'll go into how you can modify this in a little bit, but for now let's just take it as it is. And then these are company symbols: Yahoo, Apple, Google, Microsoft. If you want to get a different company symbol, put in their four-letter company code here, and you'll get it. Okay last piece is we're going to encode the base URL and our query. We're going to encode it in URI, which basically means that all these spaces we're going to encode so that they transfer to the HTTP request appropriately. So we're going to encode URI base URL plus YQL underscore query. That, that'll just add these two together. And then our final string is YQL underscore query underscore string plus all of this stuff. Now you're going to be wondering, hey, Mr. Myers, where did you get that? So that's what I'm going to show you next. All right, let's go to your internet browser real quick and look up Yahoo Finance Explorer. Oops, sorry, Yahoo Finance, maybe API Explorer. There we go. Yeah, a YQL console is what we want. So this is, the, this is the developer console for Yahoo Finance. This is pretty great. Um, it does a lot of things. You actually can search a lot of things in Yahoo, but I don't know why you'd ever want to. <laughs> um, but what we're going to do is we're going to take our query right here, and we're going to copy it 
and paste it. No, we're not going to do that at all. <laughs> uh, I must have made a small error. Let's see. Quote? No? I don't know. Hold on. You're going to be wondering what this uh, other stuff is over here, and I'm going to show you that right now. So let's go to our internet browser uh, and search for Yahoo Finance API Explorer. Okay, and the third one down should be this YQL getting data from Yahoo Finance. Okay. So what I would suggest doing is clicking this link. It's on the second answer to the Stack Overflow question. This link is going to take you directly to the console. And it's going to load up the query that we're using. And you're going to hit test. And it's going to return in JavaScript object notation. It's going to return exactly what this query is going to look like. Pretty cool. Okay, but it's of no use to us here. What we need to get it is we need to get it into our program. That's where this comes in, the REST query. Okay, this is the full URL you would need to send to get this data out. Okay, and let's look at it real quick. Let's see query.yahooapis.com slash v1 slash public slash yql question mark q equals okay so we have that piece right that's just our base uri url excuse me so that's good all right the next piece says percent 20 percent 20 as ac or sorry the next piece is select and then percent 20 percent 20 is just a space encoded in url so select star from yahoo.finance.quote does this look familiar it should it's all this stuff. Okay, if you scroll over, you can see all that stuff ends right about here where it says end format. Right here. That end format piece is what we need to put in here. We need to copy this and we're going to paste it in here. We also don't need to specify a callback because we're going to use jQuery. So you can go ahead and delete the callback. Okay. This will complete the string. Okay. Remember, this is our API Explorer. So whatever it says here, you can actually copy this and paste it into your Chrome browser, and you'll get the data right from it. Okay. That's what this is doing. That's pretty cool. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to do this, we need to paste this into your browser. We need to send the request in code. And that's what we're doing here. Finally, we use the jQuery function dot get JSON using the URL query string final. And then function data, this is the function that get JSON will return when it's done. So once it retrieves the data for us, it's going to call this function with the argument of data, and we want to log that data just to see what it looks like. Let's hit save and let's run the thing and let's uh, let's see what we get. I don't know. Let's hope it works. So go to your folder, open up your index. Okay, it's not showing anything on the screen because we're not telling it to. We got to inspect the console. All right, looks like it returns one object. And if you drill down from object to query to results to quote. Each one of these objects in this quote array is the stock quote for the company you're looking for. What do you know? Hey yo. That was weak. Hey yo, there you go. All right. So that's what our data looks like. It looks like in our return object data there's an object called query and in the query object there's an object called results. And in the results object, there's an array called quote, and each object in that array is our stock quote. So let's like display some of this information. That seems like a good idea. Um, let's just take the first one. You could use whatever you want. So what we need to do is we need to, uh, let's just do the change. We'll display the change for now and uh, call it a day. 
So let's go ahead back to our HTML. <coughs> let's make, I don't know, let's make, I'm just going to make it under here, but it's completely unnecessary to do what I'm about to do. Um, actually, let's just make a whole new row. Yeah, why not? You can choose to use this however you want, but we're going to make a whole new row. And in that row, we'll make a new column. In that column, we'll make a paragraph tag with an ID of change. So we want to change the inner HTML of change to be the change. <laughs> All right. So let's see, we're going to first extract change from our data. So let's make a variable called change value, and that's going to be data dot query dot results dot quote, which is an array, so quote object at zero dot change. Okay, I really hope that worked. <laughs> Alright, and then we'll go to document.getElementById change.innerHTML equals change value. Let's see if it happens. hey -o! Check it out. All right, that's not very descriptive though. So let's say, make it say change plus change value. Look at that. So that is some real time right now from the stock market, right now stock data that you just retrieved in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 lines. That wasn't too bad. We could probably do it in fewer if we really wanted to, especially this piece. This is kind of messy. Data.query.results. Too many dots. You should really break this sort of thing up. Uh, but hey, what do I know? Maybe if you wanted to make it a little nicer, you would do variable, uh, you know, quote object equals data.query.results.quote. And then you would make change value quote object dot change. That way, if you wanted to get other values out of it, you could. So, like, you could get also you could also get you know days high, days low. You, you know, you could get all these a lot easier. Okay, but that's uh, the end of your tutorial on getting real time data out of Yahoo Finance. I hope you found it informative, and uh, I hope you'll be able to incorporate it on your current project. Enjoy!